According to the National Criminal Justice Reference Service in 2005, an estimated 600,000 to 800,000 men, women, and children are trafficked each year. An estimated 14,500 to 17,500 foreigners are trafficked into the U.S. The number of U.S. citizens trafficked within the country is even higher, with an estimated 200,000 American citizens at risk for being unwillingly thrust into the commercial sex trade. After hearing these shocking numbers, I am going to inform each of you how to first recognize the signs of human trafficking, what to do if you see or suspect someone being trafficked, and lastly, what we can do to prevent human trafficking amongst ourselves. My name is Madison Felton, and let's get started. So what are the signs of human trafficking? According to the DHS, or the Department of Homeland Security's Blue Campaign, the indicators of human trafficking include, but are not limited to, um, if they compare disconnected from family, friends, or community, um, if a child has stopped attending school or a house of worship, if a juvenile is engaged in commercial sex acts, um, if they are disoriented or confused or showing signs of mental or physical abuse, if they have bruises in various stages of healing, um, if they're fearful, timid, or submissive, if they show signs of having been denied food, water, sleep, or medical care, um, if they're often in the company of someone to whom or he or she defers or is someone that seems to be in control of the situation, so like where they go or who they talk to, um, if they appear coached on what to say, if they're living in unsuitable conditions, if they lack personal possessions and not appear to have a stable living situation, um, if they can't freely leave where they live, there are unreasonable, unreasonable security measures. Um, these are a few out of a long list. Um, and not all indicators listed that I listed above are present in every human trafficking situation. And the presence or absence of any of the indicators is not necessarily proof of human trafficking. So, what should you and I do if we suspect that somebody is being trafficked? Um, according to the United States Department of State, the first thing that we should do is ask these specific questions. Can you leave your job if you want to? Can you come and go as you please? Have you been hurt or threatened if you tried to leave? Has your family been threatened? Do you live with your employer? Where do you sleep and eat? Are you in debt to your employer? And lastly, do you have your passport or identification? And if you don't have it, who has it? Asking these questions follow up on the red flags that you notice on trafficking victims without jeopardizing the safety of the victim if the trafficker is watching them. The next thing to do after we are sure that somebody is being trafficked is to contact the proper law enforcement right away. The first number to contact is 911, um, but the National Trafficking Hotline should also be contacted, and that number is 1-888-373-7888. Um, you can report a tick. Tip, contact with anti-trafficking services in your area, or request training and technical assistance, general information, or specific anti-trafficking resources. The hotline is equipped to handle calls from all regions of the United States from a wide range of colors, including but not limited to potential trafficking victims, community members, law enforcement, medical professionals, legal professionals, service providers, researchers, students, and policymakers. So what can we do to prevent human trafficking amongst ourselves? Um, according to the Michigan State University or the MSU Extension in 2017, some of the ways that we can get involved are buy responsibly. Um, fair trade items are a good way to go about that. They're famously known for not having any contact with the trafficking program. Um, we can work on understanding of victim-centered approaches. Uh, we can volunteer at a local shelter or mentor and reading programs. We can know the indicators or red flags of potential labor and sexual trafficking victims, like the things that we talked about earlier in the first point. Um, we can program the national hotline number and give the number to five other people for them to program in their phones. Again, that number is 1-888-373-7888. Um, if you suspect somebody is being trafficked, call the hotline or your local police agency. You can, if you get old enough, consider being a foster parent. And then being a voice, speak up for those that have no voice. Um, there are also films, books, social medias, and articles reviews such as Finding Dawn. Um, the Michigan Human, Michigan Human Trafficking Task Force Facebook page is a great place to visit. The PBS series on human trafficking. The CNN Freedom Project ending in modern day slavery. Child slaves, slavery, a 21st century evil. Um, that's on YouTube. Um, the beginning and end of rape. Cons Confronting Sexual Violence in Native America, 
Uh, that was 2015, and the author of that book is Sarah Deer. And then you can share the Global Modern Slavery Directory. The directory contains over 1,700 organizations in 174 countries to, to assist in providing a safety net for victims. So overall, the main thing that we can do is educate ourselves on this topic. Today, we looked at the visible signs that somebody may be a trafficking victim, what to do if we suspect somebody is being trafficked, and what we can do to prevent human trafficking amongst ourselves. This crime is often swept under the rug, so even by doing this speech, I am playing my part in raising awareness. I challenge each of you, after listening to this speech, to find a way to spread awareness yourselves. Thank you for listening.